All right, so working on right now, it's 06 Grizzly or Kodiak 450. Uh, symptom is the battery went dead, killed the CDI, got a new CDI, 35 bucks on Amazon. The next big issue is the display stopped working. Apparently it's a known issue with these Yamahas. Basically you give it power and I'll go ahead and do it and just show it. So one of the one of the more common topics that I've been seeing and issues I've been seeing is a lot of people have been saying that a fuse is corroded under there and one of the leads is not getting power. So there's two ways of this unit getting power. There's it getting power by I believe this brown and blue traced wire. That's the feed for the illumination, if I'm not mistaken. And then the red and green in this harness is the power for everything else. Both of these are present. Both are good back there, the piece panel, and I've needed power there. Brown is also good. This harness got chewed up by some mice years back, and I had to repair it a long, long time ago. But anyway, moving on. Now the unit doesn't work at all. Apparently it was a common thing with Yamaha's battery goes dead, unit gets killed, and you gotta buy a new one. All there is to it. So hopefully I can figure out what's going on. Alright, so number one, starting off, getting into this unit is the biggest issue because it's a completely sealed unit. It's, it's fused together when they manufacture it. So what I had to do was take a hacksaw and very carefully cut the seam apart where it's put together, and it allowed me to break everything open. So you can see the lip that goes around and some spots it got cut through but it's all right I'm in it so right off the bat I don't see anything too terrible um, there are a couple diodes there and there that, button fell off. that do look a little bit singed but overall look fine So, gotta start somewhere. Looks like the unit is, the whole PCB is heat riveted in, all on these black dots. They're just molded over, hot pressed in. So if I need to pull that out, I'm gonna have to pull those. This main cap right here is probably on the input side to kind of filter out. It looks a little bit tinged there too, but it's, it's solid, the pads are clean. It almost looks like there is a small little voltage regulator right there, a little transistor based style. All right, so I'm gonna go in, I'm trying to see on my phone if the camera's getting this all, but I'm gonna go in, I'm gonna add some solder to these on this surface mount resistor, this diode, probably this cap while in there, this diode, this diode, and that diode. Alright. Right now I'm just adding a little bit of electronics paste flux to the pads before I start hitting them with heat. Tip nice and tinned. After adding all that solder, gotta clean all the flux off. Just using some 91% alcohol. Just brushing away all the flux because it's corrosive. Now, I'm gonna go through and do some diode checks on these surface mounts.
That one's showing shorted. Hmm. I'm gonna need to pull that out and check it. Do a little further check on it. Let me check this resistor. 0.8K. That's not good. I've got a resistor reading out a spec and I've got a diode not reading a spec. Now, this diode, if the camera can see it, this diode is labeled as DZ1, which means it's a Zener diode. Now there's no schematics for this display at all, which means if that's a Zener diode, unless it has very legible markings on it, I have no clue at what voltage I need to get. All number on it. <coughs> so that might be good. <coughs> A27. E K. To me, the only thing that would make sense with that is when the battery goes low, the device tries to pull more cur current to make up for that difference. Pulling more current would burn something out in my mind. And now that I look at it, that resistor does look a little burnt. It's 220, so that's a, it's a 22 ohm. I have to double check on it. I don't know these codes off the top of my head. I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull that resistor and I'm going to pull that diode. And I'm going to see what we're working with. Oh, it's not going to be a good day when the big guns come out. Because mainly I just don't have anywhere to put it. That'll work. I have on to this DZ1, the Zener diode. R1. There we go. Clean those pads up. Try to remove some of that excess solder. That's a little overkill, to be honest. Um, let's check DZ1 real quick while it's off the board. I'm gonna hit it with this device is a little different than normal. Resistor 23 ohms. Well that's not right, but it is picking up the right pads. Yeah, that's not right. That's bad. Both are pretty close in line on the front side of the circuit where all the power input is. Hopefully that's uh, gonna lead me in the direction I need to go. I stumbled across a 22 ohm resistor hiding in my bag of tricks. So, first thing I'm going to do is put this 22 ohm resistor in place temporarily. Okay, so all I've done so far is replace the bad 22 ohm resistor on the board. It was measuring higher than it should have. I replaced it with a 22 ohm known good one. The Zener diode is removed right now. There's no Zener diode in it. Um, that's for some kind of voltage regulation. I'm going to have to look in. We're at so far with the temporary resistor in there. Key on. I'm 
me. I don't know what to say about that. That's just too awesome. So we'll see where it goes from there. I am not going to go through the trouble of ordering and sourcing down a surface mount resistor for this because I have a very high current one. It's a through hole style, but the way this board is laid out, there's plenty of room in here for this to tuck away and be safely out of the way. There shouldn't be a lot of current flowing through these leads, so it shouldn't fall off. Vibration may be one thing, but I think I can just attach a blob of silicone and that may help it out. So I'm gonna make a nice neat little package. New resistors here, leg down to that pad, leg down to that pad. I may add some silicone from there to there just to help with vibration. On the uh, display unit here, um, I replaced the resistor, 22 ohms. Uh, this is a high current one. I'm sure the original surface mount one was a high current. Uh, removed the Zener diode across here. It's shorted. I can't replace it because it's almost impossible to know what Zener voltage that diode was without having the schematic, which is probably never gonna happen being what this part is. Without it, it works and seems to function correctly. The only thing I can think is that's part of this circuit right here, which looking up this part right here is for low voltage and over voltage protection and I guess shut off times it's kind of vague and especially in this circuit there's no way of knowing what it's for very easily so I'm gonna leave it out for now I'm gonna put the assembly back together the way I see it is beforehand it didn't work so if I can get it to work now it's a win-win big plus so next steps gonna be is just sealing everything back up and putting the face back on it so that's where we're going to go from here. What I'm using is this uh, Permatex adhesive sealant. This tube's a little bit used and abused, but it should have some life to it. First things first, I need to make a mounting point for that resistor. That should be plenty good. I just don't want it to vibrate and break loose those prongs. Next thing's going to be to putting a clean bead all the way around this and sealing it up as good as it can be because Beforehand, this was waterproof. Now it's not. I need to make it waterproof again. Now, as well, my thought process on this is too. Now that I don't have that plastic seal and I'm using this silicone based seal. If I need to get back in here, I can just hit it with some heat and this silicone should soften up enough to cut back into it. But it's not always the case. If need be, I can cut it again with a saw, I guess. Hopefully this gets it by though, for the lifetime of this vehicle.
sure those prongs are in there. And I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna clamp this and I'm gonna let all that silicone stay oozed out on the sides. And then after it dries, I'll come back with a razor and cut everything clean. See, I just put a block over the face of this and clamped it. I'm just gonna let it sit overnight so all that silicone can cure. Last thing, it's all done. Cut the excess off. RTD's all good. I'll show one quick tip on how to tape all this back. Last freebie. Always start at the plug in. Like I said, these are might be a little different than yours because some rats chew up this one. Had to repair it years and years back. Some new wires. I always started the plug in. Leave a little bit exposed so you can see what wire colors wear. You don't want to have to come back and troubleshoot and guess what wire is what. Factory.